Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna be going over the best render settings in Adobe Premiere Pro. There are a lot of different options in the render settings. Like if I just click the codex up here, you can see that there are a ton of different codecs to render in. And a lot of times, we don't need really specific codecs. All we need is some good options that we can use on a general basis because sometimes you know you wouldn't use the same codec if you're going to be outputting a Blu-ray disc as if you would be uploading to YouTube. So there are a couple sort of defaults that I always fall back on that have worked really well for me and that's what I'm gonna be going over today. We're gonna go over a couple different tiers and the best settings for each tier. So let's just jump right into it. The first one that I like to use and I use it the most is the H.264 format. This is a basically a streaming format. Um, a lot of lower end cameras will actually, when they record the video, they'll decode it or encode it into this while they're recording it and they'll save it on the memory card as an H.264. The reason for this is that it is very compressed, yet it still looks pretty good. And it's very streamable, which means the data is really easy for machines to run and it doesn't take a lot of processor strength. This is why this is the best format to export for YouTube and other online videos. It'll get you a decent quality that is going to look pretty good and you know when you upload it to YouTube, YouTube's gonna do its own thing with it. So it's not like you're going to be losing any quality. If you make it any better than this, YouTube's still going to degrade it. So this is perfect so you can render it out and you'll know what it looks like when it gets to YouTube or any other online service. So this is what I use. I use H.264, then I go to the preset and I go match source high bitrate. That just means it's going to match all the source settings and then it's going to make it a high bitrate which means uh, as high quality as basically this format can do. And then the rest of it I don't touch. Uh, once you hit the preset as match source high bitrate, it's going to do all the stuff. It's going to take all the data from your sequence settings and then it's going to export. And whenever you get it, so I have a couple of the versions over here, you see the H.264. It's very easy to use. It can be streamed on a bunch of different services and as you see if I double click it here, it opens right up in Windows Media Player. The the rest of them might not, and I'm gonna go over that in just a second. But like you can see, it's a very easy to use file, very easy to share, and that is why I use it for basically everything that I'm going to share online. Now, the next tier up, I think, is any sort of higher level encoding. Um, a lot of these are Blu-ray encodings. One of my personal favorites is the H.264 Blu-ray. That's a good version of H.264, but a sort of higher quality. It's still gonna have some of the artifacting that the H.264 introduces, which is more of there's gonna be on the darker areas, there'll be some more noise, there'll be a little bit of motion sort of artifacting. But the one I like to also use is the MPEG-2 Blu-ray. Um, this one, you can see that the estimated file size is 54, while the H.264 was 21. So the original file that I'm using here is actually 50, 58 megabytes. So this one is definitely a big re reduction, the H.264, it's a big reduction at 21.3. Now the MP2, which is right here, it comes in right around 56 megabytes. So it's coming into just basically the same amount of data as what you put into the software. And you'll also notice that it's a little bit harder to play. Whenever I export as these settings, it's going to come out with a bunch of different settings. And the reason for this is that it's exporting it as a Blu-ray. And so whenever you export it as a Blu-ray, it's gonna sort of separate the channels. But it also preserves that in a, fa in a sense, is that there's a separate codec for the audio, there's a separate codec for the video, and that way they aren't being put together, so you'll have better quality on each one of those. You don't have to have one sort of algorithm that's dealing with both of these very complex and different things. So you'll see that's a little bit harder, and you can't actually play this on Windows Media. Let me see if it, uh, no, it's opening up in VLC, but if I hit open with, and then try to play on Windows Media Player, it's gonna come up with an error with this. You could probably download the codec somewhere and get it to work, but because you have to download it, it means that other people haven't downloaded it, which means it's not as easily shareable. You'd have to send a codec with it, or you have to have a higher end player like VLC, which has a bunch of different sort of uh, codecs in it that I can read. So you can see the M2V plays it right here, and I've analyzed this footage with the original, and these basically look exactly the same. There's a tiny bit of artifacting on the motion blur and in the darker areas, but in, for all intents and purposes, it's almost identical. So then that brings us to our last tier, which is going to be the DNxHD. And this one is sort of a, a streamable, extremely high definition um, footage. That's basically what it is. It's going to be about as high as you can get, sort of in line with After Effects' lossless setting. If you render this one out, uh, which I did right here in the DNxHD, You'll notice right here, that's 417 megabytes. So we put in a 58 megabyte file and we got 400 
and 17 megabytes out of it. That is a really, really large file. And that is because it is preserving every bit of detail that it can. Uh, there's no other way that it can basically do it is once you get to like the 99% of quality, you start going up exponentially. So this is going to come out basically lossless from whatever you put in. And you'll need to adjust the video settings a little bit. You see that there's some black edges here and it didn't grab um, the exact dimensions that my GoPro recorded on. So you might need to make some adjustments, but there are a ton of presets in here that you can make adjustments on. And there's a bunch of different files in here so that you can really sort of dial this in. Um, the bits are pretty good uh, for color range uh, 8 bit it can go up to 10 bit which is actually a lot more color so it can bring in a lot more colors in the video as well adjust all these settings and export you're going to get a really large file but it's going to come out really uh, it's not going to come out hd like i can't put in this video and expect it to come out like better than it went in but it's going to get it as close to what went in as possible so if you have some really really high definition um, video in here then it's probably a good thing to export it in this especially if you're going to like like transferring it between companies and stuff like that you don't want to lose quality whenever you do that so that is the last tier here and the thing is with this one is not even vlc can play it it's a really really sort of um intense codec so you actually have to go online and find the codec download it, and install it on the computer to get it to run however if you want to take a look at it anything that renders in after effect or after effects premiere any of the adobe programs will be able to be played back in those programs so if we drag it into here you'll see that i can actually view this and you'll see that the dimensions were off because i didn't change those but you'll actually be able to play this back and look at what it looks like and so that's pretty important to understand is that if you don't want to install the codec you can do it here but that is basically it. I hope I gave you some good suggestions on good renders. Remember H.264, that is like sort of the bread and butter. If you're doing online videos, you really don't need anything past that. Uh, it's really streamable, really YouTube friendly, Facebook friendly, everything like that. So go ahead and install that and you will be good to go. Or not install it, just use it and you'll be good to go. And then the other ones are just higher tiers. So if you don't want to lose any quality, you can go to those and you can sort of mess around with those and have at least somewhere to start with when you're trying to render out in HD. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and throw them in the comment section below. I know some of this, uh, the codec things can get a little tricky on some machines. So if you have any questions about that, send, uh, put a comment below. Uh, I might suggest also, if you're going to render it out, try to maybe send it to the render queue. So instead of going to file and then export media, you can sort of try to go to media right here and put it into queue. And that'll send it to Adobe Media Encoder and maybe some of the stuff that you're missing here will be there. So that's, sort of important to understand is that um, if one of these is missing to click the Q button and see if it's in media encoder if it's still not working throw a comment below and we will I'll see if I can't find a fix for you subscribe to see any or more videos similar to this one I make an Adobe related video every other day kind of focusing on Premiere Pro but going off into a lot of different video and just sort of any Adobe things that inspire me that is it see you guys next time